Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia.
reading from the last book of Moses called Deuteronomy. The Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who is not partial and takes no bribe, who executes justice for the orphan and the widow, who loves the strangers, providing them with food and clothing. You also shall love the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. You shall fear the Lord your God, him alone you shall worship, to him you shall hold fast, and by his name you shall swear. He is your praise, he is your God, who has done for you these great and awesome things that your own eyes have seen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the letter to the Hebrews. By faith, Adam obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith he received power of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven, and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth, for people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus said, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. The word of the Lord. Thank Thanks be to God. God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Day by day we bless you. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Lord, show us your love and mercy. In you, Lord, is our hope. Lord God Almighty, in whose name the founders of this country won liberty for themselves and for us, and lit the torch of freedom for nations then unborn. Granted, we and all the people of this land may have grace to maintain our liberties in righteousness and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Grant, O oh God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatreds cease. That our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Be ever present, O Lord, with those who are suffering from the coronavirus. Strengthen all who are on the medical front lines against COVID-19. Enable those in authority to make good and timely decisions about matters related to the virus. Help us all to do what we can to slow the spread of the disease. Empower the church to be the church in creative, calm, and compassionate ways, and bring this pandemic to a swift end so that lives are spared. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us join in the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let's join together in a prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son 
that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Welcome to St. Andrews on this Independence Day Observe. Trust that you're all having a uh, healthy and safe holiday as we give thanks for the freedom and liberty that we have here in this great country. Call your attention to music notes today. Ryan always gives us very, very uh, wonderful notes. Page 16. Uh, today it's not just about music, but it's also about the theology of patriotic music as well. I commend those notes to you uh, because I think it says a lot about how we worship in a patriotic and yet a Christian way as well. And be sure to stick around for the postlude today. Uh, you'll be very, very pleased with it, I'm sure. Subscribe to the Lord, the honor to his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts. In the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Let us pray. 
Lord God, in whose name the founders of our country won liberty for themselves and for us, grant that we may have grace to maintain our liberties in righteousness. Amen. Independence is a word with universal positive connotations. And in the context of geopolitics, no other word carries the aura of sovereignty than the word independence. It is the holy grail of would-be nations and a way to say that one has finally arrived. July 4th is imbued with that special aura of sanctity. But it's not. Only God is sovereign, only God is holy. Thomas More said before his death, I love the king, but I love God first. This must be our attitude. The psalmist would exclaim, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. There is no end to his greatness. And from the Old Testament reading for Independence Day, the Lord your God is the God of gods, the great God, mighty and awesome, who is not partial, who executes justice for the widow and orphan, and who loves the stranger. You shall also love the stranger. And from Proverbs, unless the people have a vision, the people will perish. Jesus gives us our vision as Christians. You have heard that it was said, hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. It's tough to imagine a more unsettling teaching for Americans to hear on Independence Day than this passage from the Sermon of the Mount. Resisting evildoers and praying for those who persecute us are not things we seem to do very well. And then there's that little matter of being perfect. Jesus claims that loving only those who love us isn't enough. We must love those who wish us harm. Be perfect, just as God is perfect. Sometimes when you're reading scripture, it's good to read a passage in different translations so be perfect as God is perfect. The New Jerusalem translation says, you must therefore set no bounds to your love. Eugene Peterson in his translation, The Message says, Jesus, in a word what I'm saying is grow up. You are kingdom subjects. Now live like it. Live out your God-created identity. Live generously, live graciously towards others that the way God lives, like the way God lives towards you. But let us be clear, Jesus was not saying that perfection is a state of eternal flawlessness. He knows we are sinners but it gives us grace to help us along the way. It is a process, one in which we make a practice of acting in ways that reflect Jesus' way of life as we grow into the fullness of our baptismal covenant. Remember, will you seek and serve Christ in all others, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people 
and respect the dignity of every human being. And we respond boldly, I will, with God's help. It is God who enables us to fulfill these vows. It is a process of maturation into being the body of Christ. It is a work in progress. Being generous as God is generous, being gracious as God is gracious, loving others as God loves us. It is by reflecting on our Christian vision that we become our vision. And as Americans, we must reflect on our vision to actualize our vision of national life. George Washington Carver was born a slave, and yet he became a renowned scientist and a professor of agriculture. He wrote, where there is a vision, there is hope. We are the city on the hill. Therefore, we must shine as a beacon of hope. As Americans, we have a vision to live into. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. My dear friends, the preamble makes a monumental statement. All men are created equal. But it would take 89 years and the blood of 750,000 casualties of the Civil War to end slavery and give African Americans freedom and the right to be Americans. It is our vision, but it's not fully re re realized. Here and now, you're called to live into it. Let it be so. It would take 56 more years for women to receive the right to vote. It would change the preamble to all women and men are created equal. It is a vision we still are growing into. It would take another 60 years for segregation to end in our land. We are still struggling to end segregation and the attitudes it brought forth. We are still working to be the vision of America that God has set before us. It is a vision we are still growing into. Abraham Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth upon this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in the great civil war, testing whether that nation so dedicated can long endure. It is for us, the living, we hear, be dedicated, that we highly resolve these dead shall not have died in vain, that the nation shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. To be honest, my friends, the Constitution is not a perfect document. In counting people of electoral college votes, slaves were only two-thirds of person. It would take amendments added to the Constitution to help it make it so all men are created equal. As Americans, we are invited to make real our vision of America. Beloved of God, as followers of Jesus, we can see that we are all invited into becoming
who we truly are in the image of God. We are invited into God's kingdom of loving kindness, of equality. And even in the face of our sinful nature, we can choose to act with love. We can choose to act with justice towards those still denied justice. And in so doing, we can help our nation on this Independence Day celebration to become our destiny, our dream. Martin Luther King Jr. gave a speech 57 years ago before the Lincoln Memorial. I have a dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. This will be the day when all of God's children will be able to sing with new meaning, my country tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing, land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountainside, let freedom ring. And if America is to be a great nation, this must become true. So let freedom ring. And when this happens, and when we allow freedom ring from every state and city, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, men and women, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, free at last. So be it, amen.
the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.